Hello friends, welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ILO Pathology. Uh, today's topic is P53 gene, one of the tumor suppressor genes. The learning outcomes for today's tutorial will be, uh, we will know what is P53 gene, what are its functions, how it regulates the cell cycle, and what happens if P53 is inactivated, and how it is inactivated, and, and what are the various cancers associated with P53 mutation. P53 gene, this is a tumor suppressor gene. It's called so because its activity stops the formation of tumor. This particular gene is located on the short term of chromosome number 17 and it was first discovered in the year 1979. The P53 protein is the product of P53 gene where P stands for a protein and 53 stands for the weight of the protein that is 53 kilo dalton. Okay. It is located in almost all normal tissues and it's very unstable and degrades very, very quickly. And we need to know that this is one of the most commonly mutated gene in cancer. Now, what are the functions of uh, P53 gene? The main function is it regulates the cell cycle. Okay, It helps in DNA repair and it also promotes apoptosis. We will understand these functions in detail in the next few slides. Okay, So, uh, Basically, it prevents neoplastic transformation either by the cell cycle arrest or by triggering apoptosis. A quick recap of the normal cell cycle. Okay, We know that uh, the normal cell cycle is composed of M phase, the G1 phase, S phase and the G2 phase where uh, G1 is a gap 1 and G2 is a gap 2. The G1, S and the G2M are the two important checkpoints. In the previous video where I discussed about the retinoblastoma gene and retinoblastoma protein, uh, we uh, understood that the retinoblastoma acts at G1S checkpoint, okay, where the cyclin D CDK4 complex or the cyclin D CDK6 complex play a major role in hyperphosphorylating retinoblastoma protein. If you want to study this or if you want to uh, have a quick recap about retinoblastoma protein, you can just click on the link below which I would be providing in the description. Let us uh, consider what happens when there is a DNA damage. Any form of DNA damage, it triggers the expression of P53 gene, which means to say that there is increased P53 levels. Okay, So this increased P53 level is one which prevents the cell from entering the S phase of the cell cycle. We will understand this particular concept as to how it prevents from entering S phase of cell cycle uh, in the next few slides. Okay. As of now, just understand that increased P53 levels prevents the cell from entering S phase of cell cycle. That means to say that there is arrest of cell cycle at G1 phase. So what happens if there is arrest of cell cycle at G1 phase? It allows the time for the DNA repair to take place. Okay. Basically, this arrest is really important for any given cell because this particular time is utilized for the repair of DNA. So how does the DNA gets repaired? So P53 also induces some DNA repair genes which helps in the repair of DNA. Now two things can happen here. One, the DNA can be repaired completely or two, the damage is so much that the DNA will not be able to be repaired. Now what happens when the DNA is repaired? Once the DNA is repaired, then there is no role for P53 here. Okay, So then the P53 degrades spontaneously. So when there is no P53, it means that there is no arrest of cell cycle. So the cell cycle continues. Consider if the DNA damage is too much, then no amount of DNA repair genes can be of help. Okay, So the DNA is not repaired. Then the P53 decides either of these two things. One, it will cause permanent arrest that is something called senescence or it activates the pro-apoptotic genes called BAX genes or BAD genes and then it causes apoptosis. So from this whole cycle we understand that whenever there is a damage to the DNA the P53 comes to the rescue. That means it conserves the stability of the genome and that is why it is aptly called as guardian of the genome. Okay, now you understand why P53 is called as guardian of the genome, isn't it? Now, having understood the entire thing, now it is time to understand how this increased P53 levels prevents the cell from entering the S phase of cell cycle. 
Now we'll go back to the cell cycle again. Again, I will repeat that G1S checkpoint is very much important and cyclin DCDK4 complex or cyclin DCDK6 complex is very, very important. If you recollect the video on retinoblastoma, uh, you will understand that these complexes, the cyclin DCDK4 or the cyclin DCDK6 complexes are the ones which actually hyperphosphorylates the retinoblastoma protein and that results in transcription and that results in the progression of cell cycle isn't it so that means to say that this complex is very very important so the p53 acts here let us see how p53 acts at this point we need to understand that p53 is one of the most important transcriptional regulators okay of so many genes one of the genes named WAF is also regulated. So what it does is it sits on the promoter region of this particular gene and then results in increased production of WAF proteins and these proteins are called P21. So what P21 does is it blocks the CDK4 cyclin D complex. So once the CDK4 uh, cyclin D complex is blocked that means to say that the cell cycle is halted at the G1 stage because the retinoblastoma protein cannot be hyperphosphorylated and then it stops the cell cycle at G1S checkpoint. So, increased P53 levels results in the production of P21 proteins and these P21 proteins blocks the cyclin DCDK4 complex or the cyclin DCDK6 complex. That's how the cell cycle gets arrested at G1S checkpoint. Now, let us understand how this P53 protein is regulated. See, in the normal cells, um, I told you that P53 is very, very unstable. So, what happens, what really happens here is P53, as you know, it is a transcriptional regulator. Okay, It also regulates one of the gene called MDM2 gene. So this results in the production of MDM2 proteins. So what this MDM2 protein does is it goes and binds the P53 and forms P53 MDM2 complex. So this complex degrades by ubiquitin mediated pathway resulting in degraded P53 and the release of MDM2 proteins which can be uh, utilized for degradation of some more P53 proteins. So this is what happens in normal cells. Okay, so that is the reason why P53 is very, very unstable protein. Okay, now let us see what happens whenever there is a damage to the DNA. So in those cells with damaged DNA, there is already MDM2 protein available. P53 is also there, but what really happens here is that P53 gets phosphorylated. So once P53 is phosphorylated, it prevents the formation of MDM2 complex. So, there is no P53 MDM2 complex. So, when there is no P53 MDM2 complex, there is no degradation. So, which essentially means increased P53 levels. So, go back to those slides which I have talked about increased P53 levels resulting in increased P21 levels and increased P21 blocks the cyclin cyclin dependent kinase complex and that's how the cell cycle gets arrested so this is the basic mechanism of activation of p53 and regulation of p53 proteins now what happens if uh, p53 is inactivated consider the same scenario where the dna is damaged under normal circumstances if p53 is normally available okay its role is to protect the cell by causing a cell cycle arrest isn't it so whenever there is an inactivated p53 that means no cell cycle arrest so when there is no cell cycle arrest what really happens is the cell cycle progresses but in this case the cell cycle progresses with damaged dna and that is the worst part of it because once the cell cycle progresses with the damaged dna it results in lots of genomic instability and that is the reason why there is neoplastic transformation now, how P53 uh, gene is actually inactivated? So, basically because of either by mutations or by loss of alleles. Okay, it could be heterozygous or homozygous loss of alleles. Now, what are the cancers associated with P53 mutations? Most of the human cancers are associated with P53 mutations. That is very, very important. But most commonly, the breast carcinomas, the colorectal carcinomas, the liver, lung and ovarian cancers are the ones which are most commonly implicated by mutations in 
P53 genes. So in summary, we understood what P53 gene is. We uh, understood in detail about the functions and it, the way it regulates the cell cycle. And we also uh, came to know what will happen if P53 is inactivated and how it is inactivated and various cancers associated with P53 mutation. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Please do comment. Don't forget to subscribe this channel for more videos to come and then please do share. Thank you.